Good morning. We're just going to give folks a few seconds to come in from the waiting room. As a reminder, please mute yourself when you are entering from the waiting room, unless and until you are appearing or testifying before the board. We're just going to give a few more seconds to make sure everyone does come in from the waiting room. I see someone still waiting to join. Okay. Good morning, all. This is a hearing before the licensing board for the city of Boston. Today is Wednesday, March 23rd, 2022. Today's hearing is being held pursuant to temporary amendments to the open meeting law. That is what allows us to meet virtually. Today's hearing will be recorded and posted to the city of Boston's website. Before I review procedural matters, I will introduce Chairwoman Kathleen Joyce. Thank you, Danny. Good morning. My name is Kathleen Joyce. I'm chair of the Boston Licensing Board, and today I'm pleased to be joined by my fellow commissioners, Commissioner Kiana Saxon and Commissioner Liam Curran. Thank you. And as a reminder, please do mute yourself unless you are unless and until you are appearing or testifying before the board. Please ensure that your audio and visuals are working properly. I will call each item in the order that it appears on this morning's agenda. I will then ask who is present on behalf of the oh, applicant. Yeah. The you applicant will then make, will a, make a um, one second, let's make sure everyone is muted. Thank you. Uh, I will call each item in the order it appears on this morning's agenda. I will then ask who is present on behalf of the applicant. You will then make a brief presentation regarding your proposal, followed by questions by the chairwoman and the commissioners. Following questioning, there will be testimony beginning with elected officials or their representatives. Please limit your testimony to two minutes and please state your name, address, and affiliation, if any. We're going to be calling the first item on this morning's agenda, Selly Associates LLC doing business as McDonald's located at 605 to 607 Washington Street in Dorchester. Paul Driver Common Vigiler License has petitioned to amend the closing hour of the license business from 10 p.m. to 12 a.m. midnight. Who is present on behalf of the licensee? Hi, my name is Chirag Selly. I'm here from uh, 605, 607 Washington Street. Great, and, uh, you proceed, Mr. Selly. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I'm one of the owners. And uh, yeah, our, our request is uh, pretty simple. It's uh, 6 to 10 is the original uh, license that we have, 6 a.m. to 10 p.m. for the uh, restaurant hours of operation. Our request is to extend the hours. Uh, uh, the closing hours would be instead of 10 p.m., it would be 12 a.m. Um, but the two hours would be, would be solely for delivery. So doors would be closed to a uh, regular walk-in customer, and it would be solely for the purpose of delivery. Um, by doing so, we'd be able to add about uh, 4,200 hours more uh, in labor for local, local community. communities. And uh, alongside that, uh, we'd be able to serve customers uh, later at night, but with a safe means for our employees. Um, that's the request. Thank you, Mr. Um, Selly. So just to be clear, you'll be open to patrons until 10 p.m. and then at 10 p.m. it's just delivery? Yes, ma'am. Okay. How many years have you um, yourself operated this McDonald's at this location? Uh, well, my father has had it for about four years now. Um, but prior to that, he was the director of operations for the last 25 years. So he bought it from his old owner. Okay, so your, your, your father has worked here for 25 years? Yes. And he's still involved in the business with you? Oh, yes, very much so. Okay. And I'm sorry, I missed the, the statistic by being able to open up until 12 a.m. How many more hours would that be? About 44 to 4,500 more hours based on five to six people closing every night. Um, we would be extending that five to six people uh, for the closing shift. I mean, Fridays and Saturdays are more. So it's just a roundabout estimate about the hours. Okay, thank you, that's very helpful. Um, I don't have any other questions. Commissioner Saxon or Commissioner Curran? No questions, thank you. No questions at this time, thank you. Thank you, are there any individuals who would like to testify on this matter beginning with elected officials or their representatives? Yes, good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board, Molly Griffin from the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. Um, I'm speaking on behalf of my colleague, Denise Dos Santos this morning. She held a butters meeting on March 8th and they met with the neighborhood association on March 2nd um, and they received support from director butters and several community members. So our office would like to defer to the board's judgment at this time. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other individuals who would like to testify on this matter? 
Seeing none, the board will take this under advisement. Thank you. Thank you everyone for your time. Have a good one. You too. Calling item number two, Miami Pizza Inc. doing business as Miami Pizza located at 152 to 156 Dudley Street in Roxbury. Holder of a common vigiler license has petitioned to amend the closing hour of the licensed business from 9 p.m. to 4 a.m. Who is present on behalf of the licensee? Is there anybody here this morning present on behalf of Miami Pizza? Okay, we will come back for a second call. Uh, item number three is related to a transactional item later on the agenda and will be called together with item number 24. <clears throat> item number four will not be heard this morning and will be rescheduled. Calling item number five, Sweet Green Boston LLC, doing business as Sweet Green, located at 300 Cambridge Street has applied for a common vigiler license to be exercised on the above. Fast casual restaurant serving salads, grain bowls, non-alcoholic beverages with standard kitchen equipment, all on one floor with seating. Manager Oscar Ramirez, hours of operation, 10.30 a.m. to 10 p.m. Who is present on behalf of the applicant? Good morning, uh, Chairman Joyce, Commissioners. Tom Miller on behalf of the applicant. Thank you, Attorney Miller, you may proceed. Good morning. Uh, Tom Miller, Montgomery, Quilty, and Miller. We're here representing Sweet Green in this application for the CV license. Uh, I'm joined today by Oscar Ramirez, the promote, proposed manager of record. Uh, Sweet Green will occupy the former spin studio on Cambridge Street and will provide healthy, seasonal, and high quality food to the surrounding Beacon Hill community from its scratch kitchen using fresh and local ingredients. Um, while there are different establishments along Cambridge Street, there is not a restaurant quite like Sweet Green. Uh, it'll be a good addition to the community, adding uh, diversifying the food choices um, and options for the residents and um, those who work in the area. Uh, they are an experienced operator with locations throughout the nation uh, and the city as well. Uh, the space has been thoughtfully designed to create a welcoming and warm environment, uh, as well as to provide suitable facilities for the preparation of their high quality meals uh, for the customers. This location is ideally situated for its anticipated uh, customer base, as I said earlier, nearby employees and local residents uh, arriving by foot and bicycle. Um, as Molly will describe uh, later, this project has been through an extensive community process uh, that began with the required conditional use permit for a restaurant uh, on Cambridge Street. Um, throughout this process, Sweet Green has agreed to, among other things, schedule its delivery at times to limit the impact on Cambridge Street. Uh, and the neighborhood, uh, notify app delivery drivers that they're not allowed to park on or in front of the abutting private way and appropriately, appropriately store trash internally and only place it out uh, before it's pick, pick up time. Um, Sweet Green understands the concerns of the neighbors and the neighborhood. To that end, they've executed a good neighbor agreement with the Beacon Hill Civic Association and will continue to work with the association and the neighbors to address any further issues that arise. Uh, thank you for hearing us today. We are happy to answer any questions that the board has. Great. Thank you, Attorney Miller. Chairman Joyce, any questions? Thanks, Danny. Um, Attorney Miller, are there any seats at this location? <laughs> yes, there are. There are 23 proposed seats. Okay. And does Mr. Ramirez operate any other sweet greens in Boston? Um, off, I, actually, off the top of my head, I don't know. Uh, I know that there, the district manager, uh, Anne Maruz, is uh, also on this call. She oversees nine locations in the area. I think Oscar is going to be um, specific to this location. Okay. So the general manager, will, you said, will, including this one, operates um, how many in the area? The district manager um, or Boston area lead oversees nine total locations. Okay. Okay, thank you. I don't have any other questions. Commissioner Saxon or Commissioner Curran? No questions, thank you. Not at this time, thank you. Thank you. Are there any individuals who would like to testify on this item beginning with elected officials or their representatives? Yes, yes. good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board, Molly Griffin with the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. Um, like Attorney Miller mentioned, there was a, a budget meeting scheduled on February 9th of this past of this year. Um, there, there was an issue with notifying all neighbors. So we had to reschedule to an abutters meeting. Actually, 
tonight, um, but they have met with the Beacon Hill Civic Association, their zoning and licensing committee, uh, who has voted in non-opposition to this proposal. Um, happy to detail how our butters meeting goes with everyone tonight or tomorrow morning. Um, but at this time, our office would like to defer to the board's judgment on this, so thank you. Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board. Uh, the counselor with Councillor Bach would like to join the Beacon Hill Civic Association in their non-opposition non due to the successful execution of a good neighbor agreement with the applicant. Thank you. Are there any other individuals who would like to testify on this matter this morning? I do see a hand raised from Catherine Judge. You may go ahead. Yes, hello. Uh, good morning, everyone. My name is Catherine Judge, 37 Beacon Street in Boston. I am here representing the Beacon Hill Civic Association. I'm on the board of the Civic Association and also serve as the co-chair of its Zoning and Licensing Committee. Sweet Green did appear before our Zoning and Licensing Committee regarding this CV license application as part of the community, pro community process that has already been mentioned by Attorney Miller. We have, as has also been mentioned, executed a good neighbor agreement um, with Sweet Green. And consequently, we are in non-opposition to this CV license application. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other individuals who would like to testify on this matter? Seeing none, the board will take this under advisement. Thank you. Thank you very much. Calling item number six, Life Alive LLC, doing business as Life Alive Organic Cafe, located at 505 Tremont Street, has applied for a common vitular license to be exercised on the above. Ground floor, 4,060 square feet cafe with coffee, juice bar, dining area, kitchen, bathroom, and four restrooms, two yoga studio rooms, and two shower stall rooms. Seasonal April 1st through November 30th outdoor patio on private property with 66 seats. Manager Leah Dubois, hours of operation, 7 a.m. to 9 p.m. Attorney Daniel Brennan. Attorney Brennan. Uh, yep, thank you. I'm not an attorney, but uh, my nope. name is Dan Brennan. I handle permits and licenses for Life Alive. Um, address is 50 Holt Road, Andover, Massachusetts. Um, here today for a uh, Life Alive Organic Cafe. Uh, it's a vegetarian restaurant. We do operate another location over on Boylston Street in the Back Bay. Um, this location is just over 4,000 square feet. Um, we'd have two public egresses and a service store internally that leads to a corridor um, to a loading dock where we would get our deliveries and um, have our trash taken care of in the building. Um, our proposed hours of operation are 7 a.m. to 9 p.m. Uh, we'd have 29 interior seats and 66 seasonal patio seats. Um, this project is a little bit different than our other location where we have two yoga studios incorporated into the establishment that's run by Down Under Yoga School, um, just to kind of marry the uh, healthy eating with healthy activities. Um, we did have an abutters meeting on November 9th, and uh, the Neighborhood Association was a part of that as well, the, the Ellis Neighborhood Association. Um, we hope to open uh, first week in May. And um, I, think, I think that's pretty much it. Um, Mr. Brennan, <coughs> excuse me. Yes. Are the, six, are the 66 seats in the description for the outdoor patio or, or do they also include seating inside? No, the, uh, the 66 seats are all on the outdoor seasonal patio. And then in addition to that, we have 29 interior seats. And have, have you received um, proper zoning relief for the outdoor patio? Uh, yep, uh, because it's on private property, it's an allowed use. Allowed use, okay. Okay, I don't have any questions. Commissioner Saxon or Commissioner Curran? No questions for me, thank you. Not the time, this time, thank you. Thank you. Are there any individuals who would like to testify on this matter beginning with elected officials or their representatives? Hi, yes. Um, good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board. Kim Curcioli with the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. Um, our office would like to defer to the board on this matter. Our office held in a butters meeting on November 9th, um, as well as had this project presented to the Ellis Neighborhood um, Licensing Committee. Concerns were over collection of trash on the patio, um, as well as noise, but they were all addressed by the applicant. 
Um, there's also a concern over an all season structure, uh, which will not be built. Um, it was approved by landmarks. And then I did get a request um, for the applicant to meet specifically with residents of the Atelier building. So we're working on coordinating that. Um, but again, uh, we'd like to defer to the board on this matter. Thank you. Good morning, Madam of the Chair, members of the board, Anna Calderon from Council President Spring's office. The councillor would like to go on recording support for the proposal. However, we understand there are concerns regarding the community outreach. As a result, Councillor Flynn will respectfully request more public outreach before a vote is taken so that neighbors' concerns are heard and addressed. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other individuals who would like to testify on this matter? Seeing none, the board will take this under advisement. Thank you. Thank you. Calling item number seven, TDC 1234 owner LLC doing business as Studio Alston Hotel, located at 1234 Soldiers Field Road in Brighton. Has applied for an in-holders license to be exercised on the above. Bouquet art-themed hotel offering 117 guest rooms, including 10 suites that offer conference spaces, a fitness room, and food beverage services offered by the least restaurant operated by a third party, Casa Cana. Manager Arnaldo Almonte, who is present on behalf of the applicant. Good morning, uh, Attorney Green, Dennis Quilty, um, representing the uh, applicant before you. I hope Mr. Almonte is with us. I don't see him on the screen. Um, if I may uh, describe what is uh, being requested and we'll see if we can uh, hear from him. Uh, th this is actually, I, it, truly a housekeeping matter. This is an existing hotel. It's been there for under, under two different operations for probably 20 years. Uh, I personally represented the applicants going forward on their alcohol license many years ago, which is the Casa Cana restaurant at this site. Uh, the inholder application I did not do when they first went in. Um, we believe that it either wasn't renewed or somehow during COVID when they were closed, somebody dropped the ball, if you will. Uh, and it was only uh, you know, recently that we discovered that indeed it wasn't in place. So obviously we're back in front of you to uh, reaffirm the hotel use at this site. There will be no other changes. Uh, as I suggested, the restaurant and the alcohol and the food operations are conducted separately uh, under a lease and a, and a separate license. Uh, which uh, which um, license is still in operation. The hotel is in operation. Uh, again, we beg your forgiveness and, and uh, we think this was just a, an error by um, ownership and staff during the COVID uh, lockdown. And if Mr. Almonte does not appear today, I will certainly make him available before the board votes on this matter okay. tomorrow. Okay, that would be, that's fine with us. Thank you, Attorney Quilty. Chairman Joyce, do you have any questions for the applicant? No, I have no questions. Thank you. Okay. Commissioner Sachs or Commissioner Curran? No questions, thank you. No questions, thank you. Thank you. Are there any individuals who would like to testify on this matter, beginning with elected officials or their representatives? Are there any other individuals who would like to testify on this matter? Seeing none, the board will take this under advisement. Thank you. Thank you. Calling item number eight, 99 Restaurants of Boston LLC, doing business as 99 Restaurant and Pub, located at 29 to 31 Austin Street in Charlestown. <laughs> Holder of a comic vigiler seven-day all-alcoholic beverages license has petitioned to change the manager of the license business from Robert Capello to Christopher Ross Nyhan, who is present on behalf of the licensee. Uh, Christopher Ross Nyhan. Thank you. You may proceed, Mr. Nyhan. Um, I am seeking to change the uh, manager uh, on the license to, from Robert Capello to myself, Christopher Ross Nyan. I am the newly appointed general manager. I will be on premise uh, 50 plus hours a week. And if anyone has any questions, I'll be glad to answer them. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Nyan. Um, we have four standard questions we ask of every manager of record that comes before the board. So if you'll indulge me, I'll ask you the four questions. Um, are you a citizen? Yes, I am. Are you a resident of the Commonwealth? <laughs> yes, I am. Do you have experience in the food and beverage industry? 
Yes, I do. Okay. Are you familiar with the rules and regulations of this board, the ABCC, and the laws of the Commonwealth as they pertain to the sale and service of alcohol? Yes, I am. Thank you. I don't have any further questions, commissioners. Questions, thank you. Questions, thank you. Thank you. Are there any individuals who would like to testify on this matter, beginning with elected officials or their representatives? Are there any other individuals who would like to testify on this matter? Seeing none, the board will take this under advisement. Thank you. Thank you very much, everybody, for your time, and have a great day. You too. Thank you. Calling item number nine, Barcelona South End LLC, doing business as Barcelona, located at 525 Tremont Street. Holder of a common vigil or seven-day all-alcoholic beverages license has petitioned to change the manager of the licensed business from Isabella Del Rey to Galinda Grace Loom, attorney Joseph Devlin, uh, who is present on behalf of the licensee. Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board, Elizabeth Pisano on behalf of Barcelona South End LLC. With me this morning is Julinda Loom, who is a proposed manager of record. Um, Julinda has over 10 years of experience in the food and beverages industry. She's a U.S. citizen, a Massachusetts resident, and she is familiar with the rules and regulations um, relating to the sale of alcoholic beverages. Thank you, Attorney Fasano. Thank you for covering all four questions. And I see um, Jalinda um, has joined us on Zoom. So I have no further questions. Commissioners, do you have any questions for the applicant? None for me, thank you. No questions, thank you. Thank you. Are there any individuals who would like to testify on this matter, beginning with elected officials or their representatives? Are there any other individuals who would like to testify on this matter? Seeing none, the board will take this under advisement. Thank you. Calling item number Thank 10. You. Thank you. Calling item number 10, Delta Airlines Inc. doing business as Delta Sky Club located at Logan Airport Terminal A in East Boston. Holder of an airport club all alcoholic beverages license has petitioned to change the manager of the licensed business from Marie E. Cerquera to Rebecca Basilla, who is present on behalf of the licensee. Is there anybody here present on behalf of Delta Sky Club? Hi, sorry, Rebecca Basilla here. Great, good morning. Uh, you may go ahead, Ms. Basilla. Um, so I'm just here um, representing the Sky Club in Boston and just to transfer the, the liquor license. The previous um, license holder has moved on to another station. Um, I am a US citizen. Um, and um, I'm familiar with the requirements. I know there's another question, so my apologies, but. No. Um, Thank you, um, Rebecca. I'll jump in and help you out there. Um, are you a resident of Massachusetts? I am, yes. And do you have food and beverage experience? Yes. Okay, we're all set. I don't have any questions, commissioners, do you? I do not, thank you. Thank you. Are there any individuals who would like to testify on this matter, beginning with elected officials or their representatives? Are there any other individuals who would like to testify on this matter? Seeing none, the board will take this under advisement. Thank you. Thank you. Calling item number 11, Yard House USA Inc. doing business as Yard House located at 126 Brookline Ave. Holder of a common vigiler seven day all alcoholic beverages license has petitioned to change the manager of the licensed business from Ryan Curtis Pat to Wilson Figueroa, who is present on behalf of the licensee. Uh, Wilson Figueroa with Yard House 126 Brookline Avenue. Great, thank you for being here. You may proceed Mr. Figueroa. Thank you, uh, good morning. Uh, we're just looking to change the liquor license from Ryan Curtis Pratt to myself, uh, Wilson Figueroa. Um, I will be on premise for 50 plus hours a week. Um, and yeah. Mr. Figueroa, are you a citizen? Yes, I am. Are you a resident of the Commonwealth? Yes, I am. Do you have experience in the food and beverage industry? I do. And are you familiar with the rules and regs of this board, the ABCC and the laws of the Commonwealth as they pertain to the sale and service of alcohol? I do. All right, thank you. I have no further questions, commissioners. No further questions. Nothing further for me, thank you. Thank you. Are there any individuals who would like to testify on this matter beginning with elected officials or their representatives? 
Are there any other individuals who would like to testify on this matter? Seeing none, the board will take this matter under advisement. Thank you. Thank you, have a great day. And you as well. Calling item number 12, Cuisine de Asia Inc. doing business as Billy T Restaurant located at 240 Commercial Street. Holder of a common vigiler, seven day alcoholic beverages license has petitioned for a change of officers, directors, LLC managers. Secondly, has petitioned for a change of stock interest. And lastly, has petitioned to change the manager of the licensed business from Nancy Chan to Ricky Hai Zhu. Attorney Kai Young Wong. Attorney Wong. Uh, yes, good morning, uh, Madam Chair and the member of the board. Uh, Kai Young Wong with Sasun Simrod Law LLC representing the, the applicants. Uh, I also have uh, the proposed manager, uh, Ricky Zhao, and also his business partner, Eric Lam. Basically, my clients are buying the shares of the license holder, Cuisine de Asia, DBA, BDC, and they will be the new uh, officers and uh, directors, uh, and also the new shareholders, 100% together, they will own of the license holder. And also uh, Mr. Xiao will be the, is the proposed liquor manager. And uh, Mr. Xiao is a US citizen. He's a mass resident and he has many years of uh, food management experience. He has owned his restaurant since 2007. Uh, the White Crane and uh, White Crane owns a liquor license. And he understand the rules and regulations and the process of the uh, ABCC regulations. Um, so there, there's no change in operations. Um, so basically, this this is a turnkey transaction. So. Thank you for spelling that all out um, for me this morning and for the rest of the commissioners. Um, I don't have any com questions. Commissioners, do you have any questions for the applicant? I do not have any questions. Thank you. I don't either. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any individuals who would like to testify on this matter, beginning with elected officials or their representatives? Are there any other individuals who would like to testify on this matter this morning? Seeing none, the board will take this under advisement. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, and just briefly to return to item number seven, I do see that we have been joined by Arnaldo Almonte, who is the proposed manager of uh, TDC1234 owner LLC to a business at Studio Austin Hotel. Just wanted to ask the chairwoman or the commissioners if they had any questions for Mr. Almonte now that he's joined us. Um, no, I, th I think attorney Quilty covered the questions. Um, I believe I, uh, in my notes, I, I don't have any questions. Thank you. Um, Great. Commissioners, do you? Not for me, thank you. I do not, thank you. Good morning Thank and apologies uh, to, the, to the board and to, uh, to the commissioners. Um, the process of running a hotel, obviously, um, it, it caused a bit of a snag in my schedule. So my, my sincere apologies. Thank you Thanks for joining for us. Just wanted to make sure we had the opportunity in case there were any questions. Thank, Thank you, you again. Calling item number 13, trustees of Boston University doing business as Nickerson Field located at 10 to 32 Harry Aganis Way. Holder of a common vigiler seven day wines and malt beverages license has petitioned for a change of officer director LLC manager of the corporation. Lastly, has petitioned to change the manager of the licensed business from Timothy Cavanaugh to Jillian Caradella, who is present on behalf of the licensee. Good morning, Jason Mahler, Associate General Counsel for Trustees of Boston University. Thank you, Attorney Mahler, you may proceed. Thank you. Uh, this is to add Gary W. Nixa as treasurer of the licensee for its license at Nickerson Field 10-32 Harry Aganis Way. Also with us this morning is Jillian Cardella, who is the new proposed manager of record at Nickerson Field. There are no other operational changes proposed. Jillian is a U.S. citizen and a Massachusetts resident. She is familiar with the rules and regs, uh, the regulations regarding the sale and service of alcohol, and does have experience in the food and beverage industry. As I mentioned, Jillian uh, is on this call today. If you have any additional questions. Uh, thank you, and thank you for joining us today, uh, Ms. Caradella. Um, are there any operational changes other than the change in manager? No. Nope. Okay. I think you have no other questions. Nothing further. No questions for me, thank you. Thank you. Are there any individuals who would like to testify on this matter beginning with elected officials or their representatives? 
Are there any other individuals who would like to testify on this matter? Seeing none, the board will take this under advisement. Thank you. Thank you. Calling item number 14, Sodexo Operations LLC, doing business as The Lounge, located at 300 Logan Airport, Terminal C in East Boston. Holder of an airport common vigil or seven day alcoholic beverages license has petitioned for a change of officers, directors, LLC managers. Who is present on behalf of the licensee? Hi, Amanda Taylor on behalf of Sodexo. Thank you, Ms. Taylor. Does this concern the same transactional uh, matter as item 15? Yes. Okay, I'll call that into the record as well and then let you present. Calling item 15 as well, Sodexo Operations LLC, doing business as the club located at 500 Logan Airport Terminal E in East Boston, holder of an airport common vigiler, seven day alcoholic beverages license, has petitioned for a change of officers, directors, LLC managers. You may proceed, Ms. Taylor. Hi, so both of these applications are just for a change of officers. We're simply removing two of the officers in Sodexo Operations LLC and adding two new officers. There's no change in the ownership structure. It's um, simply two officer changes. I have no questions. <clears throat> questions? No questions, thank you. No questions, thank you. Thank you. Are there any individuals who would like to testify on this matter beginning with elected officials or their representatives? Are there any other individuals who would like to testify on this matter? Seeing none, the board will take these matters under advisement. Thank you. Thank you. Calling item number 16, Blanchard's Liquors, Inc. Doing business as Blanchard's Liquors located at 741 Center Street in Jamaica Plain. Holder of a retail package store, all alcoholic beverages license has petitioned for a change in officers, directors, LLC manager of the corporation, attorney Marcy Costa. Attorney Costa. Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board, Marcy Costa, McDermott, Quilty and Miller, 28 State Street on behalf of the applicant. Um, we're here today for a change of officers and directors. Donald, Corey, the um, previous secretary has passed away. So um, we are just making the administrative change to make Christine Elder, the current president, the president and secretary. Uh, there's no operational changes and uh, no other changes involved. Thank you. I have no questions, commissioners. Questions, thank you. None from me, thank you. Thank you. Are there any individuals who would like to testify on this matter beginning with elected officials or their representatives? Any other individuals who would like to testify on this matter? Board will take this under advisement. Thank you. Thank you. Calling item 17, PAGA Inc. doing business as Icon located at 100B Warrington Street. Holder of a general on-premise all alcoholic beverages license has petitioned to pledge the license to New England Law Boston. Attorney William Burke. Attorney Burke. Good morning, Attorney Green. Good morning, uh, Madam Commissioner and members. Uh, I am uh, here on behalf of PAGA with respect to their move to pledge their license to the New England School of Law to satisfy uh, the negotiated agreement for back rents uh, due by PAGA. Uh, we've provided all the information. I'd be happy to answer any questions any of you may have. I have no questions, thank you. Thank you. No questions, thank you. Thank you. Are there any individuals who would like to testify on this matter beginning with elected officials or their representatives? Any other individuals who would like to testify? Seeing none, board will take this under advisement. Thank you. Thank you, good day. Calling item 18, 255 Newbury Inc. doing business as Taqueria Urban Kitchen located at 255 Newbury Street. Holder of a common vigiler seven day alcoholic beverages license has petitioned to amend the closing hour of the license business from Monday through Sunday, 11 p.m. closing inside, Monday through Sunday, 10 p.m. closing patio to Monday through Sunday, 1 a.m. closing inside, Monday through Sunday, 11 p.m. patio. Attorney Elizabeth Pisano. Attorney Pisano. Um, good morning, Attorney Green. Attorney John Cannell from Upton, Connell, and Devlin, um, standing yep. in for Elizabeth Pagano. Uh, 112 Water Street, Boston, Mass. I should have here with me Alan Rodriguez, the owner and manager. Let's see. Is he potentially on as Alan iPad? Yeah. Alan, there we go. There's Alan. Great. Uh, good morning, uh, Chairman Joyce, Commissioners. Um, 
The applicant here is seeking to extend its closing hour from uh, 11 p.m. inside to 1 a.m. and from outside on the patio from 10 p.m. to 11 p.m. We've had uh, a neighborhood meeting with the Neighborhood Association of Back Bay. We had an abutters meeting last night. Uh, we are willing to uh, modify the request of the extension of hours on the patio to leave it as the same as 10 p.m., but we are requesting a 1 p.m. inside closing hour, which would be consistent with the neighborhood. I have a list of about 10 licensed establishments within a, a few buildings or at least a few blocks of Mr. Rodriguez's establishment. And uh, we would like to remain competitive with those restaurants. Mr. Rodriguez gets constant requests for staying open later, especially uh, from a lot of the people that leave work uh, in the hospitality industry and wanna come and have a later meal at Mr. Rodriguez's awesome restaurant. Mr. Rodriguez is a great operator. He's operated in Boston for about 10 years at least. And uh, we think there is a public need to extend these hours. Thank you, Attorney Canal. Chairman Drace, any questions? Mm -hmm. oh, you're on. Sorry, I was on mute. How long have they been in operation at this location? <clears throat> Alan, how long have you been open at this location? Uh, I've been open at this location one year and two months. Okay, uh, I don't have any questions at this time. Um, I'm gonna defer to my commissioners. Do you have any questions? Nothing further, thank you. Not at this time, thank you. Thank you. Are there any individuals who would like to testify on this matter beginning with elected officials or their representatives? Yes, good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board. Molly Griffin from the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. Um, we had an abutters meeting last night, actually. Um, it was only attended by Conrad from the Neighborhood Association of Back Bay. Um, I know that the applicant also met with the Neighborhood Association of Back Bay previous to our meeting last night. Um, but at this time, I have received no uh, letters of opposition and no letters of support, but our office would like to defer to the board's judgment at this time. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other individuals who would like to testify on this matter? I see a raised hand from Conrad Armstrong. I'm going to ask you to unmute. Uh, hello, everyone. I'm Conrad Armstrong from 439 Marlboro Street, representing the Neighborhood Association of Back Bay. Um, the applicant met with us. Uh, NAB does have a good relationship with the applicant uh, and his existing restaurant. Um, but NAB is uh, officially going to be opposing the 1 a.m. closing hour. Um, it's been NAB's position that on the north side of Newbury Street, we're trying to reduce uh, closing times from 1 a.m. To, to midnight there because they pack up against residences. Um, although we do admit that there are existing restaurants, even on that north side, that do still have 1 a.m. closing hours. Um, we're particularly, we're objecting to the 11 p.m. closing hour of the patio. So we're very happy to hear that um, they pulled that back to 10 p.m., which was very consistent with um, other patios in Newbury Street. Thank you, Mr. Armstrong. Are there any other individuals who would like to testify on this matter? Seeing none, the board will take this under advisement as well. Thank you. Thank you. Calling item 19, Can't Stop, Won't Stop LLC, doing business as Red Hat Cafe located at 9 Bowdoin Street. Holder of a common vigil or seven day all alcoholic beverages license has petitioned for a change of officers, directors, LLC managers of the corporation. Secondly, has petitioned for a change of ownership interest. And lastly, has petitioned to change the DBA of the license business from the Red Hat to Teddy's on the Hill. Attorney Andrew Upton. Attorney Upton. Uh, good morning, everyone. Andrew Upton, Upton, Connell, and Devlin for the licensee. With me is Jake Nicholson, the majority owner. Uh, we just have some corporate transactions this morning. Mr. Nicholson is taking over the 10% interest from his minority partner, and he will now be the 100% owner. Uh, we're also removing the minority partner as an LLC manager and putting in Crystal Sanchez as a manager. And lastly, we are seeking to change the DBA name from the Red Hat to Teddy's on the Hill. Uh, and I will mention, however, that we will retain some signage uh, that says Red Hat on the inside, just because that name is uh, evocative and positive for many longtime customers.
Thank you, Attorney Upton. I don't have any questions. No Commissioner questions. Sachs and Commissioner Kern? No, thank you. No questions, thank you. Thank you. Are there any individuals who would like to testify on this matter, beginning with elected officials or their representatives? Are there any, are there any other individuals who would like to testify on this matter? Seeing none, the board will take this under advisement. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Calling item number 20, Blanchard's West Roxbury, Inc. Doing business as Blanchard's located at 418 LaGrange Street in West Roxbury, holder of a retail package store, all alcoholic beverages license, has petitioned for a change in officers, directors, LLC manager of the corporation, and secondly, has petitioned for a change in stock and ownership interest. Attorney Marcy Costa. Attorney Costa. Madam Chair, members of the board, thanks so much, Marcy Costa, McDermott, Quilty, and Miller, 28 State Street, on behalf of the applicant, similar to the uh, Jamaica Plain location. Um, this application is for a change of officers, directors, as well as a change of ownership. Um, due to Donald's passing, we are changing his um, position as secretary and director of the licensee, and the president, uh, Marsha Corey, will be taking over. Additionally, he owned a 49% share in the business that's being transferred to trust uh, through his will, and um, Marsha Corey is the trustee, so she is um, already on the license, so that's why we're here, no operational changes. Thank you, Attorney Costa. I don't have any questions. I don't either. Thank you. No questions. Thank you. Are there any individuals who would like to testify on this matter, beginning with elected officials or their representatives? Are there any other individuals who would like to testify on this matter? Seeing none, the board will take this under advisement. Thank you. Thank you. Calling item 21, Tip Tap Room, Inc. Doing business as Tip Tap Room, located at 138 Cambridge Street. Holder of a common vigil or seven day all alcoholic beverages license has petitioned for a change of officers, directors, LLC managers of the corporation. Secondly, has petitioned for a change of stock interest. Lastly, has petitioned to change the manager of the license business from Gordon F. Wilcox to Brian Poe. Attorney Peter Pashuko. Attorney Pashuko. Good morning, Madam Chairwoman, members of the board. Uh, Attorney Peter Pashuko here. Brian Poe is also um, signed on as well. Um, Brian has uh, extensive experience in the food and beverage in industry and uh, he's essentially taking over uh, the tip tap room he's he's been involved uh, for several years but um, there was a buyout of Gordon Wilcox as well as two other uh, minority partners uh, so Brian's going to be the sole shareholder sole director um, manager of record um, and um, there's going to be no operational changes or uh, changes to the day-to-day -day operations so to speak um, as I said, Brian has about 30 years of experience in the food and beverage industry. He's a citizen of the United States, a resident of Massachusetts, um, and he's familiar uh, with the rules and regulations of the board, the ABCC, and the laws of the Commonwealth. Um, so we're happy to answer any questions. Thank you, attorney, and thank you, Mr. Pope, for joining us. I don't have any other questions. Commissioners, do you? I don't have any. Thank you. No questions. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any individuals who would like to testify on this matter, beginning with elected officials or their representatives? Are there any other individuals who would like to testify on this matter? Seeing none, the board will take this under advisement. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Calling item 22, Delta Airlines Inc. doing business as Delta Sky Club located at Logan Airport Terminal A in East Boston, holder of an airport club all alcoholic beverages license has petitioned to amend the description of the licensed business from on the third floor of the satellite building of Terminal A, gate A17, containing seven rooms, a bar and 245 seats to Logan Airport Terminal A in 15 rooms located on the third level of the main building above security checkpoint containing bar, food and beverage areas, restrooms, showers, conference room, office, kitchen prep area and storage area, seating capacity 405. Who is present on behalf of the licensee? Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board, Elizabeth Pisano from Upton, Connell and Devlin on behalf of the applicant, Delta Airlines, Inc. Um, this is the final phase of construction for Delta and Massport's plans, which you have heard from attorney Devlin several times in the past on the different phases. Um, Delta is going to expand the currently approved space to include the um, 9,728 square feet of its original club space. 
and merge the two into one big hub for a total of 16,774 square feet. Um, this is the last phase. This is a final, final stage of their construction. Um, and I'm happy to answer any questions that the board may have. Thank you, Attorney Fasano. I don't have any questions, commissioners, do you? No questions, thank you. Thank you. Are there any individuals who would like to testify on this matter, beginning with elected officials or their representatives? Are there any other individuals who would like to testify on this matter? Seeing none, the board will take this under advisement. Thank you. Thank you. Calling item number 23, Kean Kruta, LLC, doing business as Brassica Kitchen and Cafe, located at 3710A Washington Street in Jamaica Plain. Holder of a common vigiler seven day neighborhood restricted all alcoholic beverages license has petitioned to amend the description of the licensed business from one story building with licensed premises on first floor consisting of one entrance and two exits, two restrooms, 1,307 square feet storage and office space and basement to a one story building with licensed premises on the first floor consisting of one entrance, two exits, two restrooms, 1,307 square feet and storage with office and basement with outdoor and closed seasonal patio, April to November on private property, 200 square feet for 23 people. Hours of operation, indoor and outdoors, Tuesday through Sunday, 5 p.m. to 11 p.m. and Saturday, Sunday, 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. Who is present on behalf of the licensee? Uh, hi, my name is Philip Kruta. I'm the chef and co-owner of Brasca Kitchen. Thank you, you may proceed, Mr. Kruta. Uh, so we've been operating since uh, 2016 with a lot of success in the Jamaica Plain neighborhood. Um, we've been we've seen nothing but support from our local community. And for the previous two years, we've operated an outdoor patio under the temporary licensing uh, provided by the city under the uh, pandemic. Um, we have recently found that um, we wanted to apply for a permanent patio. Uh, not only because this would serve our dedicated patrons, um, but also it is um, crucial to the viability of our, of our business uh, during the ongoing uh, COVID situations. Um, so we are just seeking to uh, amend our liquor license to include the uh, outdoor seating, uh, which would be uh, contained to uh, private property. And it is something that uh, we have a lot of experience with, given that we've um, already been operating it for the past two uh, seasons. Um, additionally, it would allow us to employ up to eight more people, um, which uh, kind of continues our dedication to um, fair wages and equal pay within uh, the restaurant industry. That's something that uh, is very important to us. And uh, we have also gone through the uh, Neighborhood Association and a Butters meetings with uh, nothing but full support. Thank you. Um, the description says it's an outdoor enclosed seasonal patio. Is it tented? It is tented, correct. Okay. And I just want to confirm for the record, the private patio, um, is that covered in your lease? Do you have permission to use it already? Uh, yes, it is. Yeah, okay. we've we've done it for the past two years. Um, our landlord is actually our neighbor, and uh, he has approved everything. Yeah. Okay, we just want to make sure it's you have all the zoning in place. Um, all the yeah. zonings in place. We've actually gotten a new survey for the property, um, so the plot plan now includes the outdoor seating as well. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, I have no questions. Commissioner Saxon, Commissioner Curran? Not this time, thank you. Thank you. Are there any individuals who would like uh, to testify on this matter, beginning with elected officials or their representatives? Hi, yes, good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board, Tiffany Caballero here from the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. And a butters meeting was facilitated by our office on February 1st. Um, they received full support from the JPNC Public Service Committee. At this time, our office would like to defer to the board's judgment. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other individuals who would like to testify on this matter? I do see a raised hand from Michael Reiskind. I'm Michael Reiskind. I live at 425 South Huntington Avenue in Jamaica Plain. 
I'm a member of the Jamaica Plain Neighborhood Council and the chair of its public service committee. Uh, we had a, um, a community meeting on this issue on February 1st, uh, duly leafleted in the area. Uh, uh, Brassica Kitchen and Cafe is a wonderful restaurant um, serving uh, seven course uh, tasting menus. Um, the restaurant is uh, fully supported by the uh, community and uh, everybody who came to the meeting uh, supported the new, uh, uh, the new patio as being permanent. Um, they mentioned the wonderful uh, transformative atmosphere of this patio and we ask you to uh, uh, support this uh, patio as a permanent one. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other individuals who would like to testify on this matter? Seeing none, the board will take this under advisement. Thank you. Thank you. Calling item number 24 and the associated item three, Castle Island C2H LLC, doing business as Castle Island Brewing Company located at 10 Old Colony Avenue in South Boston, holder of a farmer brewery malt beverages only alcoholic beverages license and a common vigiler non-alcoholic license has petitioned to amend the description of the associated licenses from in one large room on ground floor with bar, seating areas, retail area, kitchen and storage space, all together as the tasting room, seasonal April to October outdoor patio on private property, 10 p.m. closing hour, 1,915 square feet, restrooms in another large room on ground floor with tasting bar and private event seating areas together with brewing equipment and storage in large room all together as the event and brew areas. Two, in one large room on ground floor with bar seating areas, retail area, kitchen and storage space all together as the tasting room, annual outdoor patio on private property, 1,915 square feet with 10 p.m. closing hour and 39 seats. Restrooms in another large room on ground floor with tasting bar and private event seating areas together with brewing equipment and storage in large room all together as the event and brew areas. Total combined seating capacity 207. Attorney Dennis Quilty. Attorney Quilty. Good morning, <clears throat> Attorney Green, Madam Chair, members of the board. Uh, Dennis Quilty representing the applicant with us this morning, Adam Romanoff, who is the owner, manager, uh, and um, the uh, advocate for this uh, terrific establishment. The, the, uh, the, the um, language is quite wordy in the uh, description. Thank you, Mr. Attorney Green, for reading through both. Uh, the basic changes on both the CV uh, license and the pouring license is to go from seasonal to annual on the uh, patio usage. Um, he has, uh, he's well, well regarded and respected in the community, uh, has conducted outreach, including, I believe it happened a meeting yesterday on site with Councillor Flynn uh, to go over operational items. Uh, we believe as we appear before you, he's fully supported in this. Uh, this is again, an opportunity which I think we've seen a lot in the recent past where uh, there are warmer days now at different times of the year and people like Mr. Romanoff and his business like to take advantage on a warm day in uh, March, for example, um, to be able to use their outdoor seating area. It is on private property, it is covered in his lease and there'll be no other operational changes uh, proposed before you today. And Adam is here if there are any questions for him. Thank you, Attorney Quilty. Thank you for joining us, Adam. I don't have any questions, Commissioners, do you? Thank you. Not this time. Thank you. Hey, thank you. Are there any individuals who would like to testify on this matter, beginning with elected officials? Or hi, their Madam Chair, oh, hi, Madam Chair, members of the board, Haley Dillon, Mayor's Office, Neighborhood Services. Um, we've received nothing but support for this project, but we would like to defer to the board. Thank you. Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board, Anna Calderon from Council President Flink's office. The councilor would like to go on record in support. Thank you. Thank you. Thank are you. there any other individuals who would like to testify on this matter? <laughs> Seeing none, the board will take this under advisement. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Calling item 25, V&V Productions, LLC, doing business as VV, located at 763 Center Street in Jamaica Plain. Holder of a common vigiler, seven-day wines and malt beverages license, has petitioned to amend the description of the licensed business from in one room on the first floor, kitchen and storage in the rear, to dining area in one room on first floor, 900 square feet, seating capacity of 37, kitchen and storage in rear, 
Additional seating for 46 on seasonal March to November outdoor patio, approximately 1,100 square feet on private property, access via Elliott Street, closing hour 10 p.m. Who is present on behalf of the licensee? Hi there, I'm Daniel Valkovic, co-owner and manager of record. Thank you, you may proceed, Mr. Valkovic. And my wife, Kristen. Also, I'm Kristen Valkovic, uh, co-owner. We have operated our restaurant, VV, at this location with 37 seats indoors since 2008. We've been there for 14 years. Um, in 2020, we, we set up a temporary patio under the pandemic rules at the, in the rear courtyard of our building, accessible to the public via Elliott Street. Uh, and we are petitioning now to create a permanent outdoor dining area in that same space, which is connected to our restaurant uh, via, via our, our kitchen door. So our building was purchased in 2021 by a, new, by a new owner who renovated the entire building, including the outdoor patio space and made it fully accessible with uh, access ramps and accessible bathrooms and um, uh, paving that's that's uh, accessible and is has put into our lease that we are allowed to use this for for evening dining from from six o'clock on in the evening so that's that's our proposal we we we, we definitely have fine the first year we had it in 2020 it was wildly popular having an outdoor patio people ask us every day multiple times a day when it's going to open when we're going to have a patio back again um, we're really feeling a need for a patio in the neighborhood. And last year we didn't have it because there was construction and it was a huge loss of business just in general with people still feeling pandemic concerns. That's great to hear. Um, I, my only question was to ask how successful were, was the patio during the temporary program? It sounds like it was very successful. It was, um, it was amazing. It was really, it was really something. Um, it was it was completely different from what it looks like now. It wasn't. It was really like a temporary thing that we just kind of threw together. But it it, it literally saved us. I mean, it, it really did. And we were very grateful for the city kind of loosening things and just letting it letting it go and trusting to make it work. That is great to hear. Um, and as you described. Um, in your presentation, the space is now covered by your new by your lease with your new landlord, and um, also any requirements have been met. Correct. Yes. Okay. Um, I have no questions. Commissioners, do you have any questions? No questions. Thank you. No questions. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any individuals who would like to testify on this matter, beginning with elected officials or their representatives? Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board. Tiffany Caballero here from the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. The Blair's meeting was facilitated for this applicant back on March 12th, I'm sorry, March 10th. And this applicant is still early in its community process. Uh, while there has been no outright opposition to this proposal, our office would respectfully ask the board to defer until said process has been completed. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other individuals who would like to testify on this matter? I see a raised hand from Michael Reiskind. You may go ahead. Um, my name is Michael Reiskind. I live at 425 South Huntington Avenue in Jamaica Plain, a member of the Jamaica Plain Neighborhood Council and chair of its public service committee. Uh, we'd ask that you defer this decision. Uh, we, they uh, have not yet met with uh, any of the uh, business uh, um, associations or the uh, residents associations or with the public service committee. We did have scheduled a uh, meeting with uh, uh, hearing with them, neighborhood hearing with them on April 5th, and um, we expect to get back to you by a letter uh, quickly after that. Uh, they are wonderful owners, but uh, we would uh, ask you that you defer until the neighborhood process is completed. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Reskin. Are there any other individuals who would like to testify on this matter? Seeing none, the board will take this under advisement. Thank you. Calling item 26, Stage <clears throat> Karaoke LLC, located at 138 Brighton Avenue in Alston. 
holder of a common vigil or seven day alcoholic beverages license has petitioned to provide bottle service on their license premise. Attorney Dennis Quilty. Attorney Quilty. Thank you again, Attorney Green, Madam Chair, members of the board, uh, Dennis Quilty representing the licensee, Stage Karaoke LLC. Its principal owner and manager of record is Henry Wong, who's with us this morning. The application as stated is to allow this existing licensee to have bottle service. The proposal would be uh, there is a, a lounge area. Uh, in addition, there are individual karaoke rooms. I believe 12 is the number. Uh, Mr. Wong understands that in any of those rooms for such service, they will have to be staffed. He's uh, understanding and aware of that and will uh, absolutely staff each of these rooms for bottle service, uh, as well as the lounge area, which of course is um, uh, more easily controlled generally, but the individual rooms he understands will have to have a server in each room and he's prepared to do that, which of course will mean being able to hire more people uh, as well. He has, he's a very successful operator and a very long time licensee in the city. Uh, he has the support of the Austin Civic Association. Um, and again, I think is, uh, I don't believe there's any opposition to this request as we appear before you this morning. And Mr. Wong is here to answer any questions. Thank you, Attorney Colty. My concerns are about the staffing with the 12 rooms. How many staff, I know you said you'll add more staff, but mm -hmm. how many staff currently work there on a busy night? Uh, on Every a Friday, uh, oh, good morning. On, the, on Fridays and Saturdays on a busy night, uh, we typically have six, between six to eight servers plus bartenders. Okay. So you would be- so Can you answer to the question, Henry, how you would do if there are 12 rooms and six servers? How, how, how will you uh, operate? The, um, so basically the bottle service will wait till the service available uh, before we provide the bottle service. Uh, not every room will be ordering bottle service. It's actually, uh, we only have, we have requests maybe twice a night uh, for bottle service. So most of the rooms do not require bottle service. You request twice every single night for bottle service? Uh, no, so the request we had on a busy night would be about one once or twice in the past. Okay. So I think, Madam Chair, he would staff the room as required. If it was okay. a request for bottle service, he would have a staffer in that room at that time. Okay. That's correct. Okay. Um, how many years have you been operating at this location? Uh, this location, about four months. Uh, this is a brand new location. We just opened okay. in December. But that, his uh, downtown location operated for how many years, Henry? Uh, more than 10 years. He was on the corner of Boylston and Tremont, uh, stage karaoke also. Uh, uh, limelight, uh, limelight Station Studios. Lime, I'm sorry, Limelight. Same, same style of operation, uh, well-respected in the downtown community in that location. Is there bottle yeah. service at Limelight? Um, there is not. Uh, Lime has been closed for uh, during uh, the pandemic. It's been closed for uh, about three years now. Okay. Commissioners, do you have any questions? Not at this time. Thank you. Um, just to follow up, the like, how many staff? What's the minimum you would get down to? Where, like, say you had a busy night of request for bottles for this, so you had three. How many staff, or any three or more, something like that? How many staff would you be getting down to where you had to say we can't do bottle service? Um, I would say when we when we don't have uh, when we could not allocate a staff uh, full time inside the room serving that uh, bottle, then we will not have bottle service. Well, that would that would be required as long as there was a bottle in there, right? Right. So we never leave the bottle. The server goes in with the bottle and leave with the bottle. Um, and if in the middle that the server has to step out of the room, she, she or he will take the bottle with them to, to be outside of the room. But do you have a plan for like the minimum amount of staff that you would have to have in order to continue to accept request for bottle service? Uh, yes, it's the, actually the number was three, that that was the minimum. Uh, that, that would be during the weekdays, say like a Monday or Tuesday when only two or three rooms are occupied then we would need a minimum of three servers. Park. May I, Commissioner, may I just inquire of, of Mr. Wong? If, if you didn't have enough staff, 
you you would not do bottle service. Is that correct? That is correct. Thank you. Thank you. Um, any further questions, Chairman or Commissioners? Um, would you be able? To, is the I don't know the I don't know the business plan at um, your karaoke place, but would people have to pre um, pre reserve bottle service? Like, what if I went there and I said, "Oh, can I add bottle service?" That's what my concern is: is that you might be be receiving requests for this when you're not properly staffed. Would this be something that? When they make their reservation for karaoke, they would have to request it at that time. Uh, that is that that they can request for this bottle service when they reserve it. Yes, they don't have to, but they can. Okay. Do you allow people to request bottle service after yes. they make the reservation in person? So, and if there's not enough staff, you would deny that. Right. Right. Okay. Right. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any individuals who would like to testify on this matter, beginning with elected officials or their representatives? Yes. Madam Chair, members of the board, Connor Newman with the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. At this time, this Mayor's Office would like to defer judgment to the board, have some background information on the community process. The applicant met with the Alston Civic Association, presented his plan. I was very well received by the Civic Group, uh, and he received their support. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other individuals who would like to testify on this matter? Seeing on the board, we'll take this under advisement. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Calling item number 27, Archana Corp doing business as Easy Market, located at 77 Stoughton Street, has applied for a retail package store wines and malt beverages license to be exercised on the above. Premise is 77 Stoughton Street, Dorchester, Mass, convenience retail store on first floor, consisting of approximately 2,570 square feet of land storage located in the back of the store and two arrears of egress. Manager, Deviani Patel. Closing time, 9 p.m. Attorney Paul J. Gannon. Attorney Gannon? Yes, good morning, uh, Madam Chair and members of the board. From the Law Office of Paul J. Gannon, I'm here to present on a request for the, the beer and wine license on behalf of our China Corporation, which does business as Easy Market. Jay Patel is with me, and I know they've been in operation for approximately four years. We did have a community meeting um, with... Um, the mayor's liaison um, hosting it. Uh, we did present petitions with uh, close to 100 um, neighbors in support. At the meeting itself, I will, I will say that there was concerns by a couple of individuals regarding traffic and, um, and accidents, which I um, respectfully uh, you know, responded that this is a neighborhood location, the, the supporters uh, are gonna be walking to the location and we don't anticipate any, any issues like any typical store in any neighborhood. Uh, the um, mayor's office did ask us to defer um, a decision until the community process is complete, which we're agreeable to. We did speak with um, the Jones Hill Civic Association. They did have their, um, the issue on their meeting agenda prior to our community meeting, but I wasn't able to hear back from the president until very recently and he informed me of the, um, that there was no real opposition at the meeting, but uh, with the, the liaison from the city's request, we think it would be appropriate to, to maybe appear at their next meeting just to touch base. I was able to answer a couple of questions of the, um, the association's president and uh, he seemed satisfied with my responses. So we're, we're asking for the, for the board to um, just defer, defer a decision until we can com complete the process. Thank you very much. Uh, Chairman Joyce, do you have any questions? Yes. Of the um, current floor space, how much do you plan on turning over to uh, wine and malt sales? I'm just gonna ask Mr. Patel, how much of the space? About 1,000 square feet. Uh, close to 1,000 square feet. They They've have a plan where they can install the wine racks and use some of the existing coolers we have some storage in and the some back. storage in the back, which they will uh, be able to place additional coolers in there. So there will be no disruption on what they're providing presently, but they would be able to use um, approximately a thousand square feet. So you're going to turn, so it's 2,570 square feet and you're going to turn 1,000 square feet of that into beer and wine? 
right now it's about six to seven hundred square feet of storage right now if i may there's uh, what they're doing is they're incorporating um an area that is not being used presently for storage which is a sizable amount so it's the bulk of that would be storage area which isn't being used for for product okay so how much of your current product are you going to be turning over into beer and wine sales so we don't expect there to be any any disruption in the current product at all. We've we've made that clear because of the extra storage space that's unused. We're we're comfortable in uh, being able to keep the present product levels the same. Okay. Um, and Mr. Patel will be the manager of record. Uh, Deviani Patel is the manager of record. She wasn't able to be with us today. Okay, she's going to have to. We can't. She'll have to appear before us before we take any vote on this and that's um, right i apologize she was out of state um when we received the date and she wasn't able to get back in time i apologize okay okay and um you've been operating here for four years yes they've been in business for four years and um and again as based on the petition the neighbors that we've been able to communicate with and sign the petition are very supportive okay um i'm going to Defer any further questions to my fellow commissioners. Um, would the manager of record be able to come tomorrow morning? I'm sorry, could she come tomorrow morning? Yeah. But I she's, think they've asked us to defer the vote for the public process anyway, so we wouldn't be yeah. voting tomorrow. Right. She, and, I, and I apologize. She's out of state, so I, I don't think she'd be back tomorrow. I apologize. Okay, no further questions. Okay. I, I did have a question about the description, if we have it right in our public notice. Sure. I don't think the description is, I'm not sure the description is correct, but we yeah, can take a look at I think we should double check the description before. Are you changing storage space into, into retail floor space? So we're using, we're using some storage space um, that's on the main floor to, to, um, to accommodate some of the product, yes. Just because we're gonna to have to be able to store that in that area. So so like the, the retail floor space as it is now will change, will expand, you're doing construction or something like that, remodeling? Yeah, uh, remodeling. So they'll, they were, they're anticipating some remodeling, but they, they, the wine will be on the existing floor. There'll be racks placed there and there'll, there'll be some remodeling, yes. Yeah, I, I could be wrong, but I think we need to memorialize the change of like the, the remodeling, if the floor space as it is now changes, we should, I think we, that should be part of the description, no? I'll, I'll, cert, I'll certainly uh, try to get that to the board by the next meeting. Yeah, I just want it to be correct so we, we have it. Yeah. No, thank you. Any further questions from the board at this time? Thank you, are there any individuals who would like to testify on this matter beginning with elected officials or their representatives? Yes, good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board, Molly Griffin from the Mayor's Office Neighborhood Services. I'm speaking on behalf of my colleague, Denise Dos Santos. Um, like Attorney Gannon mentioned, there was an abutters meeting on March 10th, and there were a few concerns raised from neighbors. They do have signatures of support. Um, Denise also received a couple emails in opposition, but they will meet again with the community, I believe you said the Jones Hill Neighborhood Association, in the next coming weeks. So at this time, our office would like to defer to the board's judgment. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other individuals who would like to testify on this matter? Seeing none, the board will take this under advisement. Thank you. Thank you. Calling item 28, Rupel Corporation doing business as J&J &J Discount Mini Mart located at 131 West Broadway in South Boston has applied for a retail package store wines and malt beverages license to be exercised on the above. Premises located at 131 West Broadway, South Boston, retail store on first floor, consisting of approximately 1,400 square feet of land storage located in the basement and three arrears of egress. Manager Michael David Gannon, closing time 9 p.m., attorney Paul Gannon. Attorney Gannon again. Yes, good morning again, Madam Chair, members of the board. Um, requesting the beer and wine um, license. Michael Gannon is here with me, the manager, and um, Tony Patel, who, who um, is one of the owners and operators of, and uh, and I'm sorry, Rupali. Rupali Patel, I'm sorry, is here as well. If if I may, 
um, the the uh, the owners of this um, local um, stores, it's a variety store, have been in operation for over 14 years. Prior to that, nearby there was a um, a full liquor um, store right next door, which is no longer in existence. I know that the neighborhood is um, exponentially expanded. Um, there there are a lot of um, participants of people that use the facility that are asked for the beer and wine license. They have signed a petition in support. And we've, we've been outreached to um, Council of Flynn's office, Council of Flaherty, elected officials, and the, the local association. Council of Flynn's office did ask that, um, that we allow a, a, a brief further um, community process, um, which we would be agreeable to. Um, I know we did have a community meeting and um, the only opposition that we did receive were for two sisters that seemed to like the way it was set up presently. But again, based on the strong support from the, the neighbors that signed the petition and the, the need, you know, the request for these, these services and the, the kind of hope that they can be competitive with other stores that are getting the same um, wine, beer and wine license, we're asking for, for it to be approved. But we are uh, in respect to a council funds request, we are asking for a deferral on a decision so we can have further community discussion. Okay, um, is Mr. Michael Cannon present? Just he so is. we could do the manager of record questions. Sure. Can he join us in camera? Hello. Hi, thank you for joining us this morning. Um, I'm gonna ask you the four standard manager of record questions we ask and the applicant that appears before us. Um, are you a citizen? Yes. Are you a resident of the Commonwealth? Yes. Do you have experience in the food and beverage industry? Yes. And are you familiar with the rules and regulations of this board, the ABCC and the laws of the Commonwealth as they pertain to the sale and service of alcohol? Yes. Okay, thank you, Mr. Michael Gannon. Um, I have a question for either you or your attorney. Um, of the, is it 1400 square feet of um, retail space on the first floor that you have at this location? Yes. How much of that space do you plan on converting to the sale of beer and wine? 600 square feet. Okay. Okay, um, I'm going to defer my, the rest of my questions to my fellow commissioners. Um, thank you. Commissioner Saxon, Commissioner Curran. I have no questions at this time. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any individuals who would like to testify on this matter beginning with elected officials or their representatives? Hi, Madam Chair, members of the board, Haley Dillon, Mayor's Office, Neighborhood Services. Um, the applicant did get us um, a big list of supporters with names and addresses. Um, and But at the uh, Butters meeting we had, we did hear opposition from Director Butters. At this time, we'd like to defer to the board. Thank you. Good morning, Madam of the Chair, members of the board, Anna Calderon from Council President Flink's office. Like uh, Mr. Gannon mentioned, at this time, the councilor would like to respectfully request more time for community process to work on concerns from neighbors and civic groups in the area. Thank you. Good morning, uh, Madam Chair, members of the board. My name is Samantha Bennett, and I'm here today to provide testimony on behalf of city councilor at large, Michael Flaherty. The councilor would like to offer his support for this application. Um, the councilor would like to note that the manager has a proven track record of effectively managing similar types of businesses throughout the neighborhood. Furthermore, the manager is actively involved in the surrounding community, often contributing to numerous community causes, events, and is thus well positioned to work closely with the community around any quality of life issues raised by butters if approved. Um, and lastly, again, the counselor would like to encourage the proponent to continue to engage with the neighbors and community to address any ongoing concerns or quality of life issues. Thank you. Issues. Thank you. Thank Good you. Morning, uh, this is, sorry, this no. is uh, David Murray from City Council at Large and Murphy's office, uh, echoing the sentiments from uh, City Council President uh, Ed Flynn and uh, hoping to continue the conversation with community. 
Thank you very much. Are there any other individuals who would like to testify on this matter? I do see a raised hand from Marie Allen. Ms. Allen, you may unmute yourself and go ahead. Please identify yourself and then you may provide testimony. Hi, yes, my name is Marie Allen. I'm a director butter. Um, like I said, Mike Gannon is a respectful guy. I do know him very well. But my issue with this is that, you know, we have quite a few in that letter from A, a Street and Broadway, B Street and Broadway, C Street and Broadway. We have a lot of places that right now sell wine and mall beverages. It's just at this point, there's not really a community need in a lot of the uh, a lot of our other meetings we've had about community needs. And I know 11 months ago, he got approved for one on 165 D Street as a manager. In that location, there was a direct need for it. But in our location at B Street in West Broadway, there is not a need in our community. We have within 50 footsteps away other locations that sell what he's trying to. And the 1,400 square feet of land, that's not a accurate on the store size of the actual store retail that the community member is going to buy. They must be having their storage in like their other, um, the one previous. Um, yeah, so I just want to put that I'm opposed to it. No disrespect to Mike Gannon, like him, but our community is just overwhelmed with so much beer and wine sales. Thank you, Ms. Allen. Are there any other individuals who would like to testify on this matter? Seeing none, the board will take this under advisement. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Calling item 29, Sodexo Operations LLC, doing business as Lufthansa Business Lounge, located at 500 Logan Airport, Terminal E in East Boston, has applied for an airport common vigil or seven-day alcoholic beverages license to be exercised on the above 6,796 6 square feet business lounge located within Terminal E of Logan International Airport, providing food and beverages to airline passengers. Premise is one story with a kitchen and dining area. Seating count is 132 and the legal occupancy is 347. There are four entrances and exits to the premises. Manager Kendra Lombard, closing time 10 p.m. Who is present on behalf of the applicant? Amanda Taylor here on behalf of Sodexo. Thank you, you may proceed Ms. Taylor. Uh, yeah, so this application is for seven day all alcohol license for a business passenger lounge at Logan Airport for Lufthansa. And it's been in existence already. We're just changing the food and beverage concessionaire. Sexo Operations has actually taken over um, for a few months now. Um, they just haven't been selling alcohol since they took over. Um, but pr prior to that, there was another food and beverage concessionaire that sold alcohol. And um, I also have Kendra Lombard, the manager, is here as well. Thank you, Ms. Taylor. Um, Ms. Lombard, um, are you a citizen? I am, yes. Are you a resident of the Commonwealth? Yes. Do you have experience in the food and beverage industry? Extensive, yes. Uh, are you familiar with the rules and regs of this board, the ABCC and the laws of the Commonwealth as they pertain to the sale and service of alcohol? Absolutely, yes. Okay, I have no further questions. Commissioners, do you? I do not, thank you. Questions, thank you. Thank you. Are there any individuals who would like to testify on this matter, beginning with elected officials or their representatives? Are there any other individuals who would like to testify on this matter? Board will take this under advisement. Thank you. Yeah. Calling item number 30, Vega Ventures Inc. doing business as Sheds, located at 32 Bromfield Street has applied for a common vigil or seven day wines and malt beverages license to be exercised on the above in one large room on ground floor with dining areas seating for 49 and banquettes, kitchen storage and office space in rear 5,428 square feet. Manager Elizabeth Sean Wilson in closing time 10 p.m. Attorney Dennis Quilty. Attorney Quilty. Yes, good morning, Attorney Green, Madam Chair, members of the board, Dennis Quilty representing the applicant with me is Ms. Wilson, uh, the proposed manager of record and the uh, owner of the uh, business in question. This is a reapplication, if you will. This matter was before the board some probably six months ago or thereabouts for a the exact same application. At that time, it was granted subject to availability. 
uh, the there was there were no licenses available. Um, a the period of time passed. We request uh, to bring the same application before you, hoping that at some point uh, within the allowed period there would be a license available for this operator, fully supported in the community. The nearby residential um, uh, buildings were supportive. The downtown um, residents association, the downtown bid. Uh, et cetera, we're all in favor. And uh, I know recently the bid reiterated its support for the uh, application. Uh, Ms. Wilson owns um, the Vega operation. She's very familiar with uh, food and beverage service, uh, has been a long time licensee and uh, I think would be a fabulous, uh, this would be a fabulous addition to the downtown community, residential and business alike. And certainly, uh, Sean is here to answer any questions you might have on the style of operation, et cetera. Thank you. Since this board already found public need, I don't have any further questions at this time, but I'll turn it over to my commissioners to see if they have any other questions. No questions. Thank you. No questions. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you very much. For, yeah. Thank you very much for your consideration. Thank you. I just want to see if there are any individuals here who would like to testify on this matter, beginning with elected officials or their representatives. Good afternoon. Uh, good morning. My name is Chu Lan Huang from the Mayor's, uh, Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. Um, yes, I can confirm that this applicant has previously completed ex an extensive community outreach regarding this proposal, having met with the Downtown Resident Association, the Boston Group Improvement District, Council Flynn's Office, and the Mayor's Office. Um, this applicant was previously approved by the board for a new license in 2021, but as no license were no licenses were available at that time. This application represents a refiling of what was approved last time. At this time, we would like to refer to refer to the judgment of the board. Thank you. Good, mo good morning, Madam of the Chair, members of the board, Anna Calderon from Council President Flink's office. The councilor would like to go in recording support based on feedback from neighbors and the boss downtown bid. Thank you. Thanks, Anna. Thank you. Are there any other individuals who would like to testify on this matter this morning? Thank you. The board will take this under advisement as well. Thank you. Thank you. And we'll just take a second call for item number two. Is there anyone present on behalf of Miami Pizza? Okay, we will contact the applicant to uh, see what is going on there. That being said, those are all the matters before the board today. Thank you, everybody, and have a great day. Thank you.